Um, this is my favorite video game series ever. Like, I absolutely love every game in the series. Um, I'm gonna include all of the games as number three because you honestly cannot play a single one of these games and not play them all at all if you just played one. So, uh, yes, number three goes to Dot Hack, GU, and Original Series. Um, so, Dot Hack is kind of this, um, it's, it's, okay, it's pretty much like, um, it's about humans playing a, on, like, an online MMO, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, pretty much, there's always, like, uh, an event that happens where people start going comatose and everybody starts, like, uh, just losing consciousness and they're, like, no longer linked to their bodies and their minds are, like, roaming inside of the world, which is the name of the MMO. And, uh, there's just so much background story about, like, the, like, the terrorist attack that made all of the, uh, like, internet die and, like, the reconstruction of the internet and there's just so much depth to the story of this series, it's insane. And, uh, you know, just the story is, it's by far probably my fairest story ever in a game. Um, the music is equally as good. Um, for the most part, every song in the game I like. There, there are exceptions to a few songs that they're average at best. That I wouldn't really say they're phenomenal or anything, but the fact is, there's more songs that I like than dislike, and that's always a plus. But the one thing that Die Hack does not excel in is the gameplay. Um, although the gameplay is good, it's it's really basic and it's not really deep. Um, I mean, Series 1, like uh, the first four games, they had a pretty tricky uh, combat system. It was, it was fun and easy to use once you learned how to use it, but um, the boss fights in that game, they were tricky. You had to like learn their weaknesses, you had to learn how to buff properly and efficiently, and there was a lot of depth in the first game, but GU series, uh, it didn't really have that much um, to it. Like, outside of uh, like battle, you could like upgrade your equipment and stuff like that, but it didn't really add too much to it. The way the game really worked in gameplay was, uh, pretty much you would, like, if a monster is, like, four levels higher than you, you wouldn't do much damage to it at all. So, you would have to grind a couple levels, then you'd be able to beat it easily. If you overgrind, then it'll do, it'll usually add, like, an extra hundred damage to your attacks, which, like I said, it's easy, and leveling is just ridiculously easy. It's like, even in the higher levels, it's only, like, three battles and you'll level up depending on the level monster above you, but, um, I don't know, just dot hack, you can't really say gameplay makes a game, I think just the atmosphere and the story and everything about it, it just, the game doesn't make, the, well, the gameplay doesn't make the game is what I'm trying to say, but that was number three, guys. Alright, so on to number two, uh, like I said in number three, uh, number two was a pretty tricky one, to, like, decision. Um, I've been thinking about this game really, really frequently, and, uh, you know, I just, I had to give it second place because it's just, it's done so much to me, as number one has, but this was a game that taught me a lot about teamwork, and, uh, just, you won't be good unless you have really good teamwork, and, uh, you know, it's just, to me, it's by far probably the most unique multiplayer game I've ever played. So, number two goes to Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Uh, now, probably a lot of people didn't really play this game. Uh, I know a lot of guys were against Splinter Cell. They said Metal Gear is better. and You know, I was one of those guys originally. Um, I loved Metal Gear and I just thought that how could an Xbox stealth game beat Splinter Cell? And I basically made the leap into it, and it but it was by far like the most fun and like time deserving multiplayer I've ever played. Um, I will say that I never fully completed the single player, just because uh, the multiplayer was so like engrossing, and I just didn't really have a reason to go play it. I did beat around like 75% of it or so. Um, when I was at my mom's house where I didn't have an internet or anything, but, um, the single player, it, it's really long, and, uh, 
I mean, you you're either drawn to stealth gameplay or you're not. There, it's not really skill based. You don't really learn anything new. It's just kind of like um, you learn the orders of their soldiers and you gotta sneak past them, or you can just run and gun. But I'm a stealthy ninja guy, so I like to sneak. But yeah, so let me get to multiplayer because this is where the game truly excels. Pretty much online, you have this mode called Spies vs. Mercenaries, which was introduced in uh, Pandora Tomorrow. And uh, pretty much, like, uh, you have the Spies and the Mercenaries team. Basically, the Spies goal, depending on the objective, like, uh, there's three different game modes, but people really only played one. At least I did. I didn't really see many of the other modes, but... Yeah, it's called Story. But, uh, I think Yeah, I think it was Story. It's been a few years, but... Basically... As spies, you're you usually depending on the map. Man, I'm all over the place, but um, yeah, you pretty much have three or four objectives, and the mercenaries' goal is to make sure you don't get any of those objectives. And if you do get an objective, they have to defend the other objectives to make sure you don't get those ones, which opened up a whole variety of just crazy tactics and strategies as spies. And you know, like. Your objectives range from like blowing up something to uh, stealing data from a computer, which it's one of the most frightening experiences. Cause okay, you'll be like hacking into the console, and they'll be like, uh, there's usually like, huh, how long is it? You know, okay, I think it was around like 15 seconds or so when you're hacking a computer, and during that like 15 seconds or so, you basically a computer is never just in the back of a room. There's always like two or three ways into that room. So you're constantly spinning around making sure there's no mercenary looking in at you. And it's like the most craziest experience because if you see a frag grenade, you have to get off that computer within like a split second and roll. And it's just, it's such an awesome experience when you run away from a merc and merc shooting at you and you just like throw a smoke grenade, like come around behind him and snap his neck. And it's just hilarious because you could like grab a spot, like a merc. And it will say like press Y button or I think it was white button or black button I forget, but you basically it'll say like uh, hold this button to talk to you that person you're choking, and you know if you have a mic you can like say I'm gonna kill you or just do random things to the person and it's hilarious because you can hear them and their teammate, and it's just it's so crazy like choosing your loadout just the maps are crazy and. It's weird, because most multiplayer maps never have music, but this game had the most creepiest, like, uh, what is it, um, I forget the word, but, uh, it just had, it had like, the creepiest background sounds and music to it, and to me, it's just by far the most creative and, like, unique multiplayer game that will, like, ever come out. It's just that good. By far the greatest game ever created, not even just within the decade, ever. Um, no PC game, I think, could ever match it. No console game could ever match it. And it's just... It's Halo 2, you can't fuck with it. Um, so yeah, Halo 2 came out in, like, 2004, which is a funny story because... Uh, I was at, like, the rental store the night I was at Midnight Launch, and, um... No, I was watching this Halo tournament over there, and I, I wasn't really into Halo at the time. I had it, but... I just kind of like playing the multiplayer, so I figured I'd watch them playing it and stuff. And uh, I just I had zero interest in Halo 2 at the time, and I thought it looked stupid compared to Halo 1. And a couple months later, my cousin buys it, and I go over to his house because he's like, "Oh, hey, I'm getting Xbox Live." I go over to his house, and I fell in love. Like it was like love at first sight. Um, just it was one of the greatest experiences I've ever encountered. Uh, you know, it's just the single player itself is okay. It's pretty epic. There's a lot of cool set pieces and like just the pacing of the story is pretty good. A lot of people didn't like the ending, but the ending doesn't make a game. The fucking gameplay does to a certain extent. And to me, Halo 2 it had like one of the greatest engines ever. Um, but you know, I didn't really care much for single player then and now. Like I've beaten it probably six or seven times, and that's by far the most I've ever beaten a game. But Multiplayer is where it truly lied, okay? Like, you uh, at the time, there wasn't really crazy multiplayer like this. Uh, you had a built-in friends list, built-in recent players list, built-in message list, 
like uh, every um, every playlist, like Team Deathmatch, Free for All, uh, Capture the Flag, Oddball, all of these modes, they each had a rank in it, and this rank would just it was so intimidating leveling it up because you would find like okay like let's say you're playing um like team deathmatch and you're a 20 your friends are 20 your friends like a 25 and you get matched up against like a 30 it's like the craziest experience because you automatically go into i'm gonna try my hardest and win this match mode and just to me it was like it it made me realize that skill is like it's it, it's obtainable no matter where you come from and I mean I was sucking at the game. I was losing to people that were like level eights and stuff and just over the course of like three months I played it every day for probably fifteen hours or so and I mean I seriously played the living hell out of this game. Uh like I would be up from like noon till like three AM every day just playing this game. And I fucking I just I can't even describe it. I just loved it so much. And you know, I just I don't know, it, it's amazing, but just like the matchmaking was really good. Um, I should also mention that they had a built-in clan system, which at the time, that was insane. Like, okay, like you create a clan, within this clan you have four ranks. You have like, um, like the novice or whatever, then you have like the member, then you have like the, I forgot what the third one's called, then you have like the overlord, and you just, you could have a hundred people in this clan. Each person in that clan affected your clan rank, and there was clan playlists which matched you up against other clans. And to me, it was just the most insane experience ever. Like when you fought another clan head to head, it was just like the most intense experience you could have. And uh, unfortunately, they had to remove clan match like later in Halo 2's life. But while it was there, it was one of the greatest things ever. Um, it also brings me to another, like, there's nothing that isn't amazing in Halo, um, but by far I think the greatest thing was custom games. Uh, basically custom games were an open lobby where you can invite your friends or recent players and you host a map, game mode, you can change the game modes, like how many kills, how many deaths, what weapons you start with, if you, ch if you can change teams, and it just created so many game modes, like zombies and... Uh, like cops and robbers. There was just so many game modes that you could create, and just I must have spent over 400 hours just in custom games alone. And uh, eh, something happened. Basically, there's these uh, glitches known as super bouncing or super jumps, whatever. And there were just like these areas on the map where if you charge your crouch, like let's say you crouch into a wall for like four seconds, if there's these certain cracks in the map where if you land in that after charging a crouch, you'll go flying up like 500 feet. Not even 500 feet, but you'll go, depending on the jump and how long you charged it, you'll go jumping seriously like 30 feet, 40 feet, which allows you to get out of the map, allows you to get on top of things that you normally wouldn't be able to, and you can just explore the maps. And there was some maps where you could like, um, there's a snow map called Containment, which was... Uh, if you played Halo, it was basically the winter version of Blood Gulch, or Coagulation, whatever you want to call it. And, um, you, you could just, you could drive these vehicles out of the map, and it, there was so much freedom outside of the map that you could just drive in any direction for, like, three or four minutes before you even hit a barrier. And, you know, we would just, like, go up on top of this structure, because, uh, there's, like, this big metal thing in the background that, you know, you'd think, like, wow, you probably can't go up there. And you can actually drive up on top of this thing, and this thing is, it's probably twice the size of the map, like how high it is. And you go up there, and we'd have like bumper car matches, and there was just way too much fun in that game. There was no way you could not enjoy it. And if you were gaming, like online gaming back in the mid-2000s, and you had an Xbox, you had Halo 2. There was no getting around that. And, I mean, ask anybody who played original Xbox Live, they'll tell you Halo 2 is the best game on Xbox. You just can't compare to it. But, yeah, that concludes my uh, decade list. I hope you enjoyed my uh, Halo 2 loving spree. It's just, I don't know, I highly recommend any of those games. And it's unfortunate that we will no longer be able to experience Halo 2 or Splinter Cells Online anymore. But, 
Yeah, thanks for watching this far if you actually did.